Batteries There are many types for your vehicle, whether it's a car or a bike. They vary in size, shape and capacity. Some are lead acid, some are lithium. But their job is to crank the engine and power the electricals. Specifically here, I have a Yuasa battery for my Ducati Monster 795 which just ran out of juice after almost 3 years on its previous battery. Due to lockdowns and being a second bike, it was hardly ridden compared to my main daily bike. At one point, it was left for around 4 months without a start, so the older battery lasted quite a while if you ask me. So there are other types of batteries out there like the more traditional wet cell battery and more lightweight lithium. For the purpose of this video, I will be specifically using this one, a Yuasa YT12B-BS. Alright, so I know most of the time when you buy a battery for your car, for your bike, you probably need it right away. But for the purpose of this battery, you must go through the procedures which takes time and you want to prolong the lifespan of the battery and get the most out of it. So it is very important that the instructions are followed closely. As you can see here, the instructions are not in English. So first, when I ordered this battery, it arrived in this box and like I said, it's not ready to be used straight away as there is a process you have to go through to prepare and ensure that it is maximized. Inside this box, you will get the terminal screws, concentrated sulfuric acid here in this cell, and the battery unit itself which has a seal on the top. So since you'll be dealing with sulfuric acid, it's best if you do the preparation work somewhere ventilated. Make sure you have some gloves and glasses on as a safety precaution. This stuff is very corrosive and make sure you don't get any of it on you. But in the case you do, be sure to wash yourself as soon as possible with plenty of water. And uh, as you can see here, for me, I'm in my bathroom, which I have a shower right behind me in case I get any of it on me some baking soda to react with the acid should any spill happens and a tissue roll as well. Okay, let's get started. So let's start by removing the battery seal at the top here. Under the seal, there are sharp tubes that can pierce the lead acid seal. Place the acid container over the sharp tubes and press firmly to break the seal which will release the acid to drain into the battery cells. Now you just have to wait until all the acid fills up the cells inside the battery. Again, please be aware that we are working with sulfuric acid and do not spill any of it. If it does get onto you, rinse yourself with plenty of water as soon as possible. This is an AGM battery. This means it's absorbed glass mat. There is a cloth material inside that absorbs the acid solution between the battery plates. So you might ask what's the difference between regular lead acid battery and AGM batteries. While regular lead acid batteries need a topping charge to prevent the buildup of sulfation, AGM batteries are less prone to sulfation and can sit in storage for longer before a charge becomes necessary. This battery stands up well to low temperatures and has a low self discharge. So as you can see here, all the acid has gone into the battery. What we need to do now is give it one hour for the acid to absorb properly into the cells. Again, be sure that you are in a well ventilated area and don't seal the holes yet. Alright, now once the hour is complete, you need to seal the battery by installing the seal onto, on top of the battery. This will keep any of the solution from spilling out. You're not supposed to undo the seal here. It's just a once off thing, okay? So now you have the sulfuric acid inside the battery. Here we shall check the battery without running a current through it. As you can see, it shows here we have 12.9 volts, which is good. It is recommended for the battery to have at least 12.7 volts without having any charge on it. If it isn't, you might need to charge it a little. The best type of charger for this is a trickle charger. I have a simple cheap one here, which should work. Actually, I kind of want it to hold a little bit more voltage and also I want to see my battery charger work. So I will leave it to charge for a couple of hours. As you can see here, after a few hours of running a charge into the new battery, we have a slightly higher voltage running at around 13.2 volts. So here's a moment of truth, whether it all works. I'll be making a video about the pain of installing a battery on a Ducati Monster soon, so stick around and subscribe to my channel if you're interested to watch that. It's more painful than you think. You will never believe the location of the battery in the Ducati Monster. Alright. The next step is obvious. We install the battery, make sure the right terminals are connected the right way around and see whether she starts. 
she starts yay success so there you go that is the proper way of how to prep a AGM lead acid battery prior to installation so it's not as simple as plug and play you buy a ticket of the box and install it your bike there is a process it's very important that you go through it you know to make sure it lasts a long time it lasts properly and it works properly as well thanks for watching the video hit the thumbs up button if you enjoyed it if you have any comments or inquiries please write them in the comment section below do subscribe to my channel for more motorcycle related content I will be doing a few more instructional videos like this in the future other than that ride safe stay safe and have a great day bye